Hello students, if you're watching this video, you're watching for ELRs 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6. We're going to cover quite a bit during this video. What we're talking about is potential and kinetic energy, and how we calculate those two things, and their relationship with each other. What you're going to need is your weak handout, a calculator, and a pencil. Here we go. First place we're going to start is in the important vocabulary. Of course, we're talking about kinetic and potential energy, so those are are two vocabulary, vocabulary words. And when we talk about these two things, what we're going to do is abbreviate them from here on in. So I'm writing them all out here, but from here on in we're going to say KE for potential energy, and we're going to say PE for potential energy. And there's one other little thing that I'm going to add in this video and when we're talking about it in class. When we talk about potential energy, what we're really talking about, to be technical, is gravitational. Gravitational. Gravitational potential energy. As we talked about in class, there are a multitude of other kinds of potential energy, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to stick with the type that just happens because you're holding something up in the air. So. Just to give you an example, a visual example, um, let's say that you've got a bowling ball attached by a string to, the, to a, a ceiling or something, um, raised up high above the floor. In this case, because it's way up in the air and it's not moving, we're going to say that it has a high amount of potential energy and no kinetic energy. Since it's way up in the air, it has the potential to fall and no kinetic energy because it's not moving. If I were then to cut that string, so there's this is the next situation, there's the string left dangling from the ceiling, but now the ball is falling through the air, it's almost going to hit the floor, there's speed mark, it's going really fast. If it's in this situation, this time it still has some potential energy, because it's still above the floor, it still has the potential to keep falling, so it's less than when it started, so we're going to say it's losing its potential energy. And it's because it's going faster and faster due to gravity, it's gaining kinetic energy. So it's going faster as it falls towards the floor. We then fast forward in time, and we're going to say at the moment, right before it hits the floor, like we're talking like less than an inch, very tiny amount of space left to go. At this space, it has been falling for a long distance, so it has a high amount of kinetic energy. And because it's just barely about to hit the floor, we're going to say it's approximately zero. So like it's essentially on the floor, but it's just right before. So we're going to say approximately zero potential energy because it's got virtually no room left to fall. So what we did here is we started with a whole bunch of potential energy and it fell. All that potential energy was turning into kinetic energy because it was going faster and faster. And by the time it came right before it hit the floor, all of its potential energy was gone and was turned all into kinetic energy. And this is the cool thing about energy is that you can turn one into the other. So let's talk about that. When you turn one type of energy into another, here's the thing that's really important to know. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Just transform. So here's the thing about that. Since we started with a whole bunch of potential energy, we're going to go into how you find out how much potential energy in just a second. And all of that potential energy was turned into kinetic energy. The nice thing about this is that because of this law, which is called the law of conservation of energy, energy doesn't go anywhere. It can be transformed into a lot of other things, but it never gets destroyed. It also never gets created. You can't all of a sudden have more energy in a system just from nowhere. It had to come from somewhere. So we're going to use this law in just a second. And this is a really important law, so I'm going to put some emphasis around it. If you have highlighters, this is a great one to highlight. So let's talk about how we're going to use the equations. Well, for kinetic energy, the equation is 1 half mv squared. And for potential energy, it's a little bit different. Mass times gravity times height. So, yes, we do have more equations. Let's talk about the parts and pieces before we actually start to use them. The first one for kinetic energy, m, of course, stands for mass. 
and we're going to be using kilograms. The V stands for velocity. And like always, we're going to use meters per second. Over on the potential energy side, M still stands for mass. Still kilograms. The G is gravity that we know and love. And for the purposes of this class, and that's meters per second per second. For the purposes of this class, when you're talking about the potential energy on Earth, we're going to keep our life simple and round to 10 meters per second per second, just so that we can have some easy math. And for H stands for height. Whoops, there we go, height. And we're going to use meters for height. So let's talk about an example. We're actually going to talk about four examples. I'm going to show you a level one and a level two type question for both potential and kinetic energy. You're going to want to use all the rest of the space on your paper, so make sure that you are um, saving some room for each of the um, four questions that I've got coming up. So I'm going to kind of cover a little bit. Here's the first one. Let's say that you have a ball sitting at the top of a ramp, and that ramp is two meters off the ground. If the ball has a mass of a half kilogram, how much potential energy does it have? So the way we're going to start this is, of course, I'm going to put my PE level 1. Here's how we're going to do it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the equation. And as I just put up on your paper already, potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So I'm going to just fill in the things that they told me in the question. So there's the question again. They told me in the question that the ball is sitting on a ramp that is two meters, so that's important information, off the ground, and it has a mass of a half kilogram. We can solve with that information. So rewriting potential energy equals, they told us the mass was 0 0.5 kilograms. Gravity is 10 meters per second per second. And they said that the height off the ground was two meters. Now you just go to your trusty calculator and you're going to find out that potential energy is 5 times, or half times 10 is 5, times 2 is 10 joules. Yes, we use joules for energy. Same potential as kinetic. Now let's do the level 2 question. So my level 2 question says, if you want to double the amount of potential energy that that same ball in the previous question that that same ball had, how much higher must you lift it? So let's get set up for that. This is the potential energy level two question. So in this question, it's saying if we want to double the amount of potential energy, well, we can use this last question that we just did to figure that out, but this would apply to any situation. If somebody were to say to you, and they probably will, how much higher must you lift something if you want to double the energy? So we're going to use some actual numbers because I think that that makes our life a little bit easier. So over on this example, we found out that this potential energy was 10 joules. We're saying, well, what do you have to do to lift, how high do you have to lift it to get double that? Well, let's just plug it in. So we know that potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. If we want to double this energy, we're saying we want 20 joules. We're going to use the same ball, so it's going to have the same mass. The mass in that for that ball was 0 0.5 kilograms. Gravity is the same, so we're going to keep it 10 meters per second per second. But in this question, we don't know how high we must lift it. In the last one, we had to lift it to 2. But now we're saying, if I double the amount of energy it takes, what height do you have to lift it to? So I'm going to leave that as an x. Again, we go to our trusty calculator, and we'll do some simplifying. So 20 joules equals a half times 10 is 5 times x is 5x. Now to get x by itself, we divide both sides by 5, and what we find out is that x equals 4. And of course, since we were solving for a height, we need meters. So check this out. It's pretty nice, actually. If you want to double the amount of energy that you have from potential energy, you simply double the height that you lifted to. So we went from 2 to 4 meters. Okay. So let's go to a kinetic energy question like potential energy. I've got two of them. Let's start on the level one. So, kinetic energy level one question. This one says, if a pitcher can throw that same ball from the previous questions about potential energy at a velocity of eight meters per second, how much energy 
will that take? So we're asking how much energy is it going to require from that pitcher's arm to get that ball up to a velocity of 8 meters per second. So as in the previous question, I'm going to start with my equation, and it's peeking out at the top here. Kinetic energy is 1 half times mv squared, so I'm just going to rewrite that down here. Okay, and now we just start filling in the things that we know. We're going to be using the same ball from the previous question, so we're going to keep that mass the same. This time they're telling us that the ball is going to be thrown at a velocity of 8 meters per second. So let's start plugging in things. Kinetic energy equals 1 half. The mass of the ball in the previous question was a half of a kilogram, so 0 0.5 kilograms. And this time they're saying the velocity is 8 meters per second, and don't forget to square it. Now we just go to our calculator. Order of operations says that we need to do our squaring first. So let's get our calculator out. If you're going to do 8 squared, you're going to get 8 times 8, and you get 64. 64 times a half times a half. We'll just keep going in our calculator. And what you get is 16. So our kinetic energy is 16 joules. That's what it's going to require from the pitcher to throw this ball at that velocity. So like potential energy, let's go to the level 2 question. For our level 2 question, level for our level 2 question, it's similar to the last level 2 question, I want to know this time if that same pitcher wants to double the velocity that he throws the ball, how much more energy will it take? So it's a very similar question. We're just using a different equation. So we're saying, all right, if I want to double this velocity, we found out that it's 8 meters per second, how much energy is it going to take to do that? Well, let's rewrite. Since in this equation, we, or this question, we don't know how much energy it's going to take, I'll leave it as kinetic energy. It's going to equal 1 half times the mass of the ball. Same ball, so we're going to keep the mass the same. Kilograms. This time, we're going to double the velocity. So last time it was thrown at 8 meters per second. They said double it, so that's 16 meters per second. Don't forget to square. And now it's just a matter of calculating. So we do 16 squared. And we get 256 times a half times a half. And this time we're going to get kinetic energy is equal to 64 joules. So this is interesting. Kinetic energy and potential energy do not work the same way. If we want to get a double of a velo double our velocity, that is not the same as doubling our energy. It's actually quite a bit different. In order to double our velocity, we're going to have to add way more than double our energy. So, now it is time for you to turn your paper over and fill out the explain section. In this section, just to remind us, because it's been a while since we've done a week handout, in the explain section, your job is to almost leave a, a reminder to yourself. What are the most important details from this? Um, what could you break it down into some bullet points? What would those points be? What do you want, are the key things that you need to remember and explain this in words, what you just saw? Once you're done with the explain section, it is the apply. And here is the question for the apply section. In the apply section, here's what I'm asking you for. Suppose that you have this roller coaster at the top of a hill. The roller coaster has a mass of 100 kilograms and because it's just sitting there at the top of the hill, it has no velocity, so it's going zero meters per second. The hill has a height of 50 meters. What I want to know is what is the energy for all three of these positions down the roller coaster track? Notice that this roller coaster is the same car, same 100 kilograms. I'm telling you it's velocity at this point in the hill. And notice that the height of the hill is exactly half of where it started. For the third roller coaster position, I'm telling you the velocity, same mass. However, this time it's on the ground, so it has a zero. I just didn't write it here because it's right at the ground. For honors, I'm asking you an additional question. Honor students, I also need to know how fast is that car going when it's three quarters of the way toward the bottom? So I'm saying instead of 
50 meters or 25 meters, I want to know when it's three quarters of the way down the hill.